section because then a few a few churches a few member are they are unable to attend this section so i just send the link to them i'm going to public this one yeah all right okay now <coughs> um have you seen the design that we have for you does it look good <laughs> look amazing yeah, thank you Sorry, because I missed your message on Zalo, so I cannot find another picture that's clear. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's okay, but you know. Uh, so, um, from the list, let I see. <laughs> let I see, let I see. <clears throat> so, from the list, I can see... Uh, I can have about at the moment there are twenty four. Um, so I send. Let me send as the file. Hey, uh, uh, sorry. Mm, right. So, Michael, you want to start yet? Oh no, no. Give me a second. Uh, mm, okay, now. Mm, Okay. Right now, I'm sending into the chat box. Uh, all right. Uh, right, so everyone, uh, um, please, so this is the one that uh, maybe I'm sharing this screen. <coughs> okay, all right. I while we are waiting, so I'm just doing you know sharing to tell you what it is. All right, okay. Right. So um. We have 24, 24 teams so far, right? Um, for the first round, which is on Sunday, um, we have how many trial pace in what we call four time slot, right? In the morning, we have two, two debates. One is uh, eight o'clock in the morning. One is 10 o'clock. And in the afternoon, we have 2 p.m. and 4 p.m., right? So what we, by the end of today, I would like to make sure that we have the column K and the column L will be filled up, right? Which have the moderator and the judges. Um, from my discussion with Mr. Michael, um, we have at least one moderator, one moderator per debate. And we need to have three minimum or uh, three churches for um for each debate, right? Um, if we, I don't know if we have enough churches to cover all the trail base. Uh, we we don't have. Maybe some of you will, uh, we just uh, more than one debate. Uh, is it okay, Mr. Michael? Yep. Okay. Right. So um. So that is the one that, you know, I would like everyone to put your name here. If you are like flexible, then, you know, I can randomly 
to fill up your your spot. But if some of you, um, especially the what we call is the 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 churches like from um, like you know, if you are the student helper, if you were a student helper, and if and if you have to go school or have all the activities, can you please um make a note here? Right, or fill up your name so that I know that you're not available in what particular time slot. Right. Um, right. So, Mr. Michael, are we allowed for five minutes for them to fill up this one first? Yeah. Yeah. yeah? We'll because, you know, I need this information. This is super important, right? Uh, yeah. The designer is waiting uh, to get this, uh, the banner out. Right, so before, why we're looking at that, I also show you the design. Uh, so we have, at the moment, we have six moderator, Mr. Michael. Yeah, so we got Emily yep. uh, here. Um, I'm not sure if you are here, everyone, please raise your hand. Vanessa, uh, V, Ville, Annie. Moderator any and Abby. All right. Okay. Right now for the churches. Uh, now let us see. For the churches, oh, I uh, my for the churches. Uh, we have about twenty four right now. Let's let me five. But I think in the list, uh, everyone have registered for like um, how many? Twenty seven. Okay, right. So, uh, yes. Right. Okay, All right. So, if we have 20, I'm not sure if we have any more tonight, right? But if we have more, then, you know, uh, we also need to see how we... Um, excuse me. So, it's going to be... Um, 9 10 p.m. and 8 uh the 14th sorry uh, 9 p.m. uh 9 p.m. on the Sunday morning 10 p.m. 9 PM. PM. is it 10 p.m. right no 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 it's morning it's a.m. so oh, it's yeah, yeah. 8 a.m. yeah okay sir so. And the last thing is 6 p.m. So we got 8 a.m., 10 a.m., right? Okay. So 8 to, and then we got 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. So hopefully we finish by 5 or maximum is 6 p.m. on Sunday. Yeah. All right. Okay. Right. Uh, so here's the list of the churches, right? Um, so I I show again. Um, this one maybe why we let them filling up uh, maybe mr michael will go through the rules and then if the uh, moderator and the judges if you have any questions then you know um feel free to ask mr michael yeah. to die we have to finish everything yeah okay so i stop share mr michael yeah and i'll start sharing Okay, so the first thing that I want to go through with you guys tonight, this is for the judges. Uh, so this is your uh, debating uh, judging rubric. So uh, this is for what you're looking for to score uh, the teams you'll be, uh, well, the teams you'll be adjudicating. So we've got the three... I'll show you this at the bottom first. We've got the three uh, categories. So we've got style, content, and strategy. So um, as you're watching each speaker deliver their substantives and delivering the reply speeches, uh, you'll be looking for things like uh, the quality of their body language. So do they have good eye contact? 
Uh, are they expressive with their hands or are they just keeping them very still? Uh, is their posture good or are they slumped over, not really caring? Uh, and their facial expressions as well, are they, are they being expressive with their face or are they just very monotone like this? Uh, you'll be looking for uh, vocal modulation. So the volume of their speech, are they too loud? Are they too quiet? Are they talking too fast? Are they talking too slow? Uh, do they have a good uh, range of pitch or are they just very monotonous when they deliver their speech? Uh, we'll be looking for things like use of emphasis and pauses. Uh, and I also want you to be uh, judging their pronunciation or their enunciation and their fluency in English uh, should be judged as well. So does everybody understand? And I'll, I'll make sure I get a copy of this to Ms. Duke. Excuse me, so she can get this to everybody. Uh, but are there any questions about the uh, the criteria for style in everybody's speeches? Uh, Harry. Okay, I, I would like to have a quick question um, about the body language part. Yeah. For example, if, if, the, if the debater camps is broken, what happens then? Uh, that's unfortunate, but if you can't see it, you can't really grade it. So that's unfortunate. Each debater has the requirement to uh, have the camera on and have the camera presenting at them. So we don't want people to just have their cameras like this, where it's just like catching the top of their heads. We don't want that. We want, uh, yeah, we want proper, proper presentation to the camera. So if they're not able to provide that, you're not able to score for that. Uh, Jason. Um, okay, like, <clears throat> uh, sorry, like, um, the debaters can also just, you know, sometimes, like, fix their cameras, they can also just use other devices, like, you know. Correct. If they're yeah, able that, to do that, they're welcome to do that. There's, like, really rare that each home has only one device. Mostly, like, my home has, uh, two phone, one laptop, one PC, one iPad. So I think that if the debater has more than one, uh, one device, then they can just use, like, there, there cannot be a certainty that all the devices has the broken camera. That would be yeah. really, really weird. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I understand that. So if they do have another, another camera option in the household, then they are definitely encouraged to use that because the requirement is that they be on camera for this debate tournament. Uh, okay, so the next thing we'll cover is the category of content. So what you'll be judging for and what you'll be scoring for is uh, the fact for first, the content of your speech the con uh, eat the content of each substantive speech, uh, the clarity of the arguments, uh, their use of supporting evidence, uh, and we want to be marking quite tough for like mostly, I suppose it'd be circumstantial or what's the word I'm looking at? anecdotal evidence. So if it's just like examples and things like that, we want to be marked a bit tougher. Um, if they're actually providing sources and yeah, providing good quality evidence, and we want to be marking them better. Uh, we want to. Uh, we also want to be making sure to check that all of their arguments, uh, or they have a relationship to the motion. So, so give me two seconds. 
Yeah, so we just want to make sure that each of the arguments that they're delivering, uh, they're on point. Does that make sense? So I just completely forgot how to speak English there for a second. Um, there'll also be your, uh, yes. So what about motions which like doesn't have specific evidence to use? For example, like, you know, like philosophical or principal motions and stuff like that. Sorry, could you say that again? Like about like the part of use of supporting evidence, right? Yep. So how will we judge it on the type of motions which like, you know, like philosophical or principal motion in which the, there isn't much, you know, evidence to actually use? I had not even considered that. Um, well, sorry, you've stumped me there. Just give me two seconds. Sorry, I'll be right back. I don't think he will give us something like mm, that hard to for the debaters to debate. Sorry, I'm back. Yeah, so um, just to answer that question from before, um, yeah, this th this is a really brand new debating tournament, so uh, I don't think there's going to be much like philosophical interpretation of the motion. So um, we're just going to have like the topic and the motion that's up for debate. Uh, so just really when we say uh, the content of the speech and the relationship to the motion, we're just saying, you know, make sure that they're arguing the point that they're supposed to be arguing. So make sure that their arguments aren't going out on too much of a tangent. Uh, Rob, do you have anything? So, yeah, I want to ask that if, like, at the end of the debate, we just announce the point and uh, that announce the point and the winners. Uh, do we have to explain why the point? Like, what what is what did they did well? What did they do well and what did they not do well? Or they forgot. So so we'll go through that uh, a little bit later when we run through the moderators portion of this call tonight. All right. Okay. Uh, I got so, uh, we'll yeah we'll, we'll explain everything to do with how what the judges do uh, and what the moderators do in the debate. We'll do that in a little bit. Uh, so the next thing will the the next thing the judges want to be looking for is organization of the speech. So are the, uh, are the debaters using techniques like signposting, making it really obvious? Uh, is there a logical flow to their arguments? Have they prepared good rebuttals uh, or are they delivering their substantive arguments first? Um, and the final thing you'd be wanting to look at is how well do the rebuttals address the opponent's arguments? Uh, so those are the, the criteria you'll be looking for for content. Uh, Rob, do you have a question? Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. I forgot to lower my hand. Jason. Um, so, like, my mom said when, when I speak, right, when I speak, like, um my voice shouldn't be like too high or it shouldn't be too low else it will like uh be you know un unappropriate when when we just speak out to others so i was just guessing um like if the debaters like their sound isn't low or too high would that count as if like they are sad or their <clears throat> their their voice is just like uh it's just you know it's it's not yeah, really so, well, all, okay. so when when we talk about vocal modulation and pitch and pacing and volume um like 
the basic or the the basic score for that and the understanding of that should be does the debater sound pleasant so you know like do they do they have good tone do they have good pacing are they using intonation uh, or are they just speaking very monotonous and just sounding like a robot and the same all the time um so those are the differences like it'll be probably the best thing i could say is that will become very apparent very quickly to you like you'll listen to debaters presenting their arguments and you'll think to yourself oh they're they're talking a bit quick or uh, slow down a bit you know like you you just start thinking these things to yourself these improvements for them um and yeah basically so it's just when they're talking does it sound pleasant to you if it does score them well if it doesn't uh, offer them feedback as to why you haven't scored them well. Oh, okay, thanks. You're very welcome. Uh, Summer. I would like to ask like, if someone has like good accent, like it doesn't have a good accent or good pronunciation, but like their points and all is really good. Like, do we grade them a high score or a low score? Like, for example, someone has good pronunciation, but their points aren't good. Like their accent's good, but their points aren't good. Do we give them like a good score? So, yes, give them a good score, but don't give them a ridiculously good score. So, like, I would say for the early, the early stages of the tournament, uh, the best scores you should be giving should be like average to very good. So you can see on the screen here, average, very good. And then, you know, you shouldn't even be considering, ex you shouldn't even be, you, you should be considering excellent as the very best grade you give. Uh, you shouldn't be giving anything over a 20, realistically. <clears throat> Sorry, just got a dry throat. But yeah, so the judges, realistically, you shouldn't be giving anything over a very good um, and definitely only an excellent if it's like truly amazing. Um, but yeah, otherwise, like be tough. Be tough with your, with your judging. Don't just give them a point because, oh, that was, no, like make sure that you Wait. really think they've earned that point. So if someone is like, so pronunciation counts. So if someone is weak in English, but their points are good, can we give them like a 20 out of 20? Mm. I mean, you should be being tough with your judging. So if one speaker is more fluent than the other, then that speaker would get more points for the fluency part of the style. Um, but, you know, if, if they're making good arguments still, then still give them good, a good score for the arguments, yeah. But all of these factors down here, we do want to be taking into consideration Okay, so the final, oh, sorry, Victoria's got a question. Okay, so, so if, what, this is a what if, so, so if a presentation is really good, but their voices are kind of pretty not good, mm -hmm. so what, what should, what point should I just kind of rate about so, it? Their voice so or their, or their they presentation. Present, so you're saying if they present good arguments, but their voice isn't very good. Is that what you're saying? Yes. So that would then reflect in your score for the speaker, where you'd probably give them a better score for content than you would for style. 
So that's mm, really how you can handle something like that. So if you think their arguments are good and they've structured their speech well, then you give them a high score for contents. But if you don't think their vocal modulation is very good, then you would just give them a reduced score for that. Okay, teacher. Check in the Thank chat, you. please. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, goodness. Screaming emus. Okay. Um, so let me finish this section on strategy uh, and then we can discuss scores, uh, like appropriate scores for uh, substantives and reply speeches. So the final content of the, the final category is strategy. So you'd be marking in strategy for things like how well did the speaker fulfill their role? So we know that each speaker on the team has a specific job to do. So the first speaker will uh, in, introduce the case and uh, set up the set up the case with their strongest arguments. The second speaker should provide more evidence, more arguments, build on the case. The third speaker summarizes and uh, what yeah summarizes and offers closing statements. Um, yeah, then we've also got things like rebuttals and points of information, things like that. Um, oof. So how well did each speaker fulfill the job that they were supposed to do? You want to consider that. Um, how well did the speakers work as a team? So have they formed a strong, cohesive case with each other? Or is it just like three individuals arguing one side of a point? Um, so you want to be looking at that as well, see how they work with each other. Um, you want to be looking at their characterization of emotion. So how well have they uh, how well have they been able to structure their case? Um, and how have they managed to characterize the motion basically? Um, how do they handle their POIs? So do they have a, a comeback to the POIs that are raised, or do they just let them go. Those things need to be taken into consideration, how well they uh, defend, their, defend their arguments, basically. Uh, their use of rebuttals. So are they making active attempts to weaken their opponent's case? And finally, just their team strategy overall. So do they have a good, clear team line? Have they worked out a solid, a solid list of arguments that makes sense when they work with the arguments made by the other teammates uh, and do they do they use their their time well for their substantive arguments like are they rushing to finish have they timed it well uh, so on and so forth excuse me uh lucas um yeah so i was having a question like if a, if a speaker's speech goes over time, then do we deduct points for that? Uh, no. No. So, so you never deduct points for something the speaker has done wrong. You only award points for things they do well. So you're not punishing them by taking points away. You're only rewarding them for doing the things well that they do well. That's how you allocate points. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jason. Um, so I would like to say that if the speaker is almost done with their talk, but it's already past the time limit. So yep. how much time, uh, how would like, I would say hi, how many seconds should we give them? Like 15 or something? So the total speaking time, and this, this is all handled by the moderator, and we'll, we will actually talk about this a bit later, um, but the, the time limits are all handled by the moderator. 
and we actually talk about how that gets dealt with a bit later. But no, judges do not uh, do not um, do not punish speakers for going over time. Because like last time, uh, me and Rosa were having like a mock debate. And yep. then and then and then one debater just um passed the time limit for like I left for three seconds and then I said stop but then she, uh, Rosa she said that we have we would have to we have we would have to give an extra fifteen seconds to the debaters like that yeah and no I was so a bit um, confused so we'll we'll discuss the the proper way to do it for the NCSN tournament. Uh, we'll discuss that in a little while, uh, actually pretty soon, because we've just finished up with the category criteria. So we all understand, judges, we all understand what we're looking for when we're uh, judging the debate. Yeah, something. Uh, yes. What's what can I do for you, Rosa? And like, if like, um, if like, uh, like a debater they fail to follow the rules, um, what would happen? Like, for example, um, a speaker said that they will not like receive any more POIs from the opponent, but um, the other, but the opponents they still push it and they. And they still like get some more POIs from them. Yeah. What do we do? Like, I don't know what to do because, like, I don't, yeah. Um, so it is up to the moderators. Uh, it, it, sorry, it, it is at the moderator's discretion to accept a point of interest. So if a player raises one, uh, the moderator can deny it and just say, no, no more points of interest or they can accept it and uh, have it presented in the debate, which again, we'll talk about a little bit later. Harry. Yeah, so like if if the debaters raise a, PO, uh, a POI, do we yeah. add points to them? Pardon? Like, do we add points to them if speakers raise a POI? Um, if it's a valid POI, then yes, you can, uh, you can give them perhaps, uh, more, more points in the strategy department if they're using their POI as well. Oh, thank you. No worries. Okay. Um, so what I'd like to do now is uh, so I just want to quickly go through the the substantive speeches and their like the the point levels. So for the substantive speeches, each speech is worth twenty five points. Style and content are worth ten, and strategy is worth five. Uh, so we've got here like what the what the scores would be for like the standard of the speech. Uh, if they're excellent, then it should be a maximum of eight out of ten, eight out of ten, four for a total of twenty. Um, if you think they're very good, it would be seven, seven, and three for a total of seventeen. Uh, average would be six, six, and two. Below average would be five, five, one and a half, and weak would be four, four, one. So we have these score ranges here. So we want you to be judging tough um, because we do want you to legitimately decide the winners of these debates. So we don't want you just to kind of take it easy. Like we, yeah. Um, and Sorry, and for the reply speeches, uh, because they're only two minutes rather than four minutes for the substantives, they're only worth 15. So style is six, content is six, and strategy is three for 15. 
Uh, so very good would be four, four, and two. So you're looking at about 10 points. Average would be three, three, one and a half. And below average would be two, two, and one. So yeah, we've got these. Um, so we've got all of these, these levels you should be looking at. Uh, and again, like, don't be like super brutal, but like judge tough, but judge fair. Uh, how is 884 to equal to 20? Because 8 and 8 are 16, plus 4 is 20. So, uh, so uh, if the speaker, for example, uh, their body language or everything they needed for their style was quite good, so they got, a, so they got 8 points for that, maybe their enunciation and their fluency were a little bit off, so they didn't get 10. So they got 8. Then the content of their speech, which is very well structured. Uh, they presented many good, well thought out arguments. They provided good evidence. Uh, and they also had a few good rebuttals to the previous speaker. So they might have scored eight out of 10 there. And then in their strategy, uh, they might be the first speaker. So they opened the, opened the case very well excuse me, for their team. Uh, they, they were the first, say, uh, opposition speaker. So they set, the, they set the case up well for their team. They had some rebuttals to the first proposition speaker. Uh, they raised a couple of POIs as well, or they had a couple raised that were defended well. Uh, and they set, yeah, they just set a good case down for their teammates to capitalize on. They might get a strategy score of four out of five. And that would give them, for example, a score of 20. <laughs> so guys, don't be scared about giving judging a go. Um, like Ms. Duke wouldn't have selected you if she didn't think you could do it. And that's the truth about it. Okay, so we've had a look at the judging rubrics. Let's now have a look through. Whoop. Let's now have a look through the uh, the moderators uh, slideshow. So this is how we. <laughs> oh. No, we'll be playing wolf game to decide. We'll be playing wolf game. Werewolf game, sorry. Werewolf game. Okay, so uh, this is the, the moderator's training section. So this is how the debate is structured. So we'll be covering things like what does a moderator do, the structure of a debate, and the moderator's duties during this, all of the speeches that they have to give. So what does a moderator do? A debate moderator has a very important job. The moderator must make sure that the debate they are overseeing runs smoothly. They do this by performing the following duties. Number one, ensuring that all of the rules are followed and enforced. A debate, oh, yes, Harry? No, it's, it's just my hand when I raise my stuff earlier. Ah, no worries. Thank you. Jason. Um, well, I just want to ask from the judge, like about handling the POI. I mean, like at least how many times should we give a POI and when should uh, the debaters give a POI? Um, so there's no there's no limit really on how many you can raise there's only a limit on the time in which you can raise it but we'll explain that again in a, a little bit what can I have a quick question? when should we when should we give POIs? but when should you what sorry 
When should we give and raise our POIs? Uh, when you feel you have a valid one that you can raise. So um, um, the the time limits of it are explained in a little bit in the slideshow. Um, but yeah, that that will be explained, like when debaters can uh, make POIs and all that sort of stuff. So I'll keep reading this. Uh, so the first duty of a debate moderator is ensuring that all the rules are followed and enforced. A debate is a formal structured argument between two teams. To ensure fairness, there are procedures, rules, and formats that must be followed. The debaters are made aware of the rules of the debate in advance, but may ask the moderator to clarify the rules for them at any time. Uh, so if at any point during the debate, a debater asks you uh, to clarify one of the rules, that, that will be one of your jobs moderators, is just to read the rule and make sure that the debaters all understand. Uh, so number two is ensuring that speakers do not exceed their allowed time to speak. So a debate requires time limits for each speaker to ensure that they are succinct, organized and orderly. As the moderator, it will be your responsibility to ensure that the speakers adhere to the time limits set for them. Uh, number three, ensuring that the judges score the speakers fairly. So the judges are responsible for scoring the debate, deciding the winning team and the best speaker overall. As the moderator, you have the power to question a judge's decision and overturn it should you suspect that a rule or a procedure has been violated in the making of that decision. Judges are honest in their deliberation of speakers, so use this power sparingly and only if you genuinely suspect unfair judging practices. So does everybody understand that one? Can a debate be wrong? Uh, if it just so happens that the total score of both teams adds up to the same, then yes, absolutely, a debate can be a draw. So, like, a debate can, can be a draw, right? It can, yes. It's very unlikely because of how the scores... The, the yeah, scores poor, poor Lucas, up. like, he last... Poor Lucas, last time he, he marked the, the debate, like the fight was so intense, he be, he became co confused and had brain stroke. <laughs> he felt really? like he needed to be called, He needed to. He feel felt like he yeah. to, I guess a draw. Lead him. But yeah, at, at at the end of the day, each of you are going to have had good brain power. <laughs> yeah, but like at, at the end of the day, each of you are going to have different. Uh, each of you are going to have different things that you're going to consider higher marks, higher, lower marks. Like you're you're going to develop your own standards, and that's cool. Like that's the important thing. You know, is that you don't all have to judge for the exact same thing. It's your opinion. How well do you think these people did? That's what we want to know. So don't don't feel pressure to mark anybody a certain way. Yeah, that is important to know. Um, so, uh, number three, oh, sorry, we've just discussed that one, ensuring that the judges score the speakers fairly. So that rule base or that that rule basically says that the moderator has the power to overrule the judge's decision, but use it sparingly it's like an ultimate boss kind of thing um and the fourth job that they have is informing the speakers judges and the audience of the order of events so as the moderator your job is to control the proceedings and to ensure that the debate runs smoothly with minimal time wasted you will do this by announcing to the parties present details such as which speaker is next to speak, time limits and waiting periods. 
So this is, I suppose, the moderator's way of signposting. They're going to be very obvious about what's happening next. So if you believe um, a debater is being please. disrespectful, I suppose that would come from style. That would just let that... Uh, yep. So, so does um, a judge that that rates each speaker or the whole team? So the judges will score each speaker individually, but once they've scored all of the speakers, then they will um, what do you call it? Uh, they'll come up with a team total. So you will be. You will be working out the top for the team. Pardon? Um, yeah. So I'm going to add on some sent to you a little bit. So let's check it. Yeah, but um, we can definitely, we can definitely run through how to uh, how to finalize the debate scores and work out the winners. Uh, we can definitely have a training session on that before Sunday. And how to make you laugh. So, yeah, so to show you how to properly score a debate, um, we can uh, we can run through the the scoring rubrics and show you uh, how to tally up the scores and decide the winners. Okay, so number two, we just wanna run through quickly the structure of the NCSN debating championship tournament. Uh, so we use a modified Asian parliamentary debate structure. So as seen below. So we've got the moderator's introduction speech, usually takes about five minutes. Uh, then we've got the first proposition speaker's opening statements for four minutes, uh, preparation period for the next speaker for one minute, and then the first opposition speaker's opening statements go for four minutes. Uh, again, another preparation period. Second proposition makes their arguments. Uh, preparation period. Second opposition, preparation period, third prop, preparation, third op. And now you'll notice we go to the reply speech preparation time, so they get two minutes. Straight away then the opposition team make their reply speech first. Uh, proposition make their reply speech second. And then once that's happened, the judges will spend maybe 15 minutes deliberating. So talking to each other, working out which team they think won. Uh, yeah, discussing all the important information. And then once they've made their decision, uh, they will come back and announce the winners of the debate. And they will also spend some time just giving some general feedback to all of the debaters. So it can be stuff like, uh, you spoke well, but maybe next time try to make more eye contact or maybe be more expressive with your hands. Don't just let them sit there holding the cards, that sort of stuff. So yeah, just, just give them general feedback meant to improve the debater's performance in future rounds. Uh, and then, so the overall debate time should take about one hour and 15 minutes if the moderator is running things smoothly. Yeah, stop trying to impress all the cool kids and swearing. My gosh. Okay, so. Let's now have a look at the moderator's duties during a speech. So. The moderators have a number of things that they must do during the debate. So number one is to welcome everybody to the debate uh, with a little introductory speech. And um, the things you wanna be talking about 
or some, some of the things you may wish to talk about in your opening speech. Uh, things like welcoming the judges, debaters and the audience, uh, introducing yourself as the moderator, introducing the topic, introducing the teams and their position towards the motion, introduce the judges, get the audience and the debaters excited for the debate. So try and get everybody hyped up and ready to go. Uh, set expectations of the debaters for the audience. So let them know what they're gonna be doing. Set expectations of the judges. So let them know that these guys are gonna be scoring the debate. Uh, it's gonna be up to them who wins and who loses. <laughs> guys, stop it. Uh, so you want to encourage the debaters to try their hardest, just pump them up again. Uh, set expectations of yourself as the moderator. So let everybody know that you'll be basically running the debate, making sure everything goes smoothly. And then you'll be announcing, you'll announce the beginning of the debate and invite the first speaker to speak. So uh, we continue on. Uh, points to cover during the speaker's substantive arguments. So for uh, first, second, and third proposition and opposition, when you introduce them, uh, you'll want to introduce each speaker and invite them to deliver their arguments. And then you'll want to start a time for four minutes. So that's their speaking time. Uh, one minute into the speaking time, unmute your microphone, say one minute and mute yourself. This will begin the period where points of information and points of order are allowed. So during the first minute and during the last minute of each speaker's speech, uh, no one is allowed to challenge with points of information and points of order. But minute two to two minute four, uh, you're allowed to uh, raise them. So three minutes into the speaking time, you'll unmute your microphone say three minutes and mute yourself. This will end the period where points of information and points of order are allowed. Uh, four minutes into the speaking time, so when it's up, uh, unmute your microphone, say four minutes and mute yourself. This will alert the current speaker that their allowed time to speak is finished. Um, then what I do is I just restart the timer quickly and then I give them that final 30 seconds and if the current speaker goes over their allowed speaking time by more than 30 seconds, the moderator must immediately ensure that the current speaker is made to stop speaking. So you just hit the mute button. Yeah, you, you just hit the mute button and you'll, uh, yeah, uh, you'll just cut them off. Um, excuse me, so uh, do we have POI? Uh, yes, we do have points of interest. So if we have a look uh, uh, back I here. I don't care about it because this is the first time like I joined a debate competition with POIs. Uh, okay, yeah. So yeah, so um, during the substantive arguments here, just have a look here at the second point one minute into the speaking time, unmute your microphone, say one minute and mute yourself. This will begin the period where points of information and points of order are allowed. So if anybody tries to raise a POI or a point of order during the first minute or the last minute, they're not allowed to. Okay, I got it. Yeah. Okay. So points to cover during the preparation time between speakers. So once the current speaker has finished presenting their arguments, unmute your microphone, thank the speaker, and then announce that the one minute preparation period before the next speaker has begun. Start a timer for one minute, mute your microphone again. So now you're just watching the timer that you've set. And then, uh, and then again, once that preparation time is up, you'll announce that next speaker to begin making their arguments. And the other thing is the points to cover oh. during the preparation time before the reply speeches. Uh, once the third opposition speaker has finished delivering their arguments, unmute your microphone, thank the speaker, 
and announced that the two minute preparation period before reply speeches has begun. Start a timer for two minutes and mute your microphone again. Uh, once the two minute preparation period before reply speeches is finished, announce that the teams will now deliver their reply speeches, invite the opposition team to deliver their reply speech first, start a timer for two minutes. Uh, during a reply speech, there are no points of information or points of order allowed. Uh, debate, yeah, uh, debaters are or the reply speakers are just left to speak. Uh, so once the opposition team has delivered their reply speech, thank the speaker and invite the proposition team to deliver their reply speech. Start a timer for two minutes. Um, now we're up to the judges deliberation time. So once the proposition team have delivered their reply speech, thank the speaker, announce that the judges will now go and deliberate amongst themselves to decide the winning team. We've scheduled 15 minutes for this, but do not rush the judges if they need more time. So the moderator will jump between the main room and the judges deliberation room just to find out if they need any more time. Um, and then, yeah, if they do, just go out back to the main room and just talk to the debaters about stuff. And then the judges will uh, come back when they're ready. So when the judges return from deliberating, announce to the debaters and the audience that they have returned and will now announce the winners of the debate, the best speaker overall, and give the debaters some feedback. So that's when the judges will... Oh, goodness. So, yeah, um, what were we talking about? Oh, yeah, so when the judges return from deliberating, announce to the debaters and the audience that they have returned and will now announce the winners of the debate, the best speaker overall, and give the debaters some feedback. So that's where the judges will take over. They'll announce the runners-up, announce the winners, and then give each team or each member of each team, just some general feedback. No need to go too specific, but just give them some general feedback that will improve their debating uh, moving forward. Uh, once the judges have announced the winners and given their feedback, thank the judges for their efforts, congratulate the winning team, and thank the audience for their spectatorship. Inform everyone that the debate is now over and wish them a great rest of their day. Um, so yeah, do you guys have any any questions? Rob. Oh okay. no, it just uh, I forgot to lower my hands again. Ah, uh, no worries. Playing Dang Khan. Oh yeah, I have a question. Um, yep. So normally when judging, right, you judge speaker scores and then you also judge argumentation. So yeah. um, is it possible if a team has higher speaker scores but lose? Because I see that speaker scores consist of um, style and, and content and everything. So it's not basically just argumentation. So do teams win by argumentation or, or their speakers have higher speaker scores? Uh, so the teams win by highest overall scores. So that's how we're judging. Yeah, that's how we're judging this tournament. That's how we're deciding all the winners is by just the highest score from the judges. Uh. Felix. So what would happen if like the overall score of both sides are the same? I mean like, all of them are the same. Um if the scores are completely tied, the judges then I suppose would just have to deliberate with each other and decide the winning team. So if you've if you've scored both teams like identically, 
then like is it like yeah. rock paper scissors? I suppose so. Yeah. Um, no, the the judges should actually discuss it and work out a winning team, and not just uh, it was a draw. So this team has this team wins. Like actually discuss it and work out the winning team properly. Uh, Harry. Um. Okay. So if if I uh, if I judge the scores too harshly, for example, I I judge, um I judge them like below average. Well, so, so as long as you're judging both teams fairly into the same standard, it doesn't matter how how harsh you are. But when we say judge tough. I just mean don't go giving out eights for everything because, yep, that was good. Yep, that gets an eight. Like, <laughs> ju ju judge the scores. Yeah, ju give them honest scores is, is what I would say. Give them honest scores, but don't just rush to give them all like eights and nines. Uh, Ham. Yeah, so how the hell would I give out honest scores if I don't even know uh, what to give? Like, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure how much, uh, uh, what score something would get. So I've never been a great judge for that. Well, you can consider this the beginning of your, the beginning of your judging training. but um. We can maybe we can arrange another session a bit later in the week where we go over like how to actually score uh, a, a debater. Um, teacher Michael, may yes, I recommend Michael. something? So maybe tomorrow, because the parties run the debater, they need to practice as well. So should we let the debater to practice at the mock debate? Not the topic that they're preparing, but you know, the old topic, for example, that the previous topic. Yeah. And then um, and then you know, we have the churches to practice their church as well and the moderator. Yeah, can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so maybe we, so before the Sunday, so we have yeah. tomorrow, it's Thursday and Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah we can do that. Mm. So how many of you available for tomorrow to be, you know, what we call the mock church or training church? The rehearsal, that's what we call, yeah, rehearsal. How many of you available? What time uh, would that start? I... I think not too late like tonight, uh, maybe about seven or eight. <clears throat> I'm not free because tomorrow I'm going to have an English class and ends at eight and I'm going home. I think that's eight for we, we don't need everyone. We just need, you know, at least maybe Are three. I'm free. So we have staff Me. available, Harry available, who else? Available. available. Okay. Yeah. So, um, are you available at seven o'clock? At like, which? Seven o'clock tomorrow, seven p.m. Seven p.m. Yes. Tomorrow. Yeah. Are you? Um, seven p.m. I'm not free at that how time. How about how about eight o'clock? Eight thirty would be okay. Do you think 8.30 too late for the debate or not? I'm uh, free tomorrow at 7 p.m. I don't think I can, but you know what? It's up to you, Michael. If you if you would like to do with them. like um, uh, Yeah, I can do. 8 o'clock? 8.30? Vietnam time. Yeah. Yeah, so which is do. about 12.30 our time? Yeah, can do. All right. So you think, everyone, can we do like 8 o'clock? In the morning? No, 8, 8, 8 p.m. 
Ah, yes. <laughs> yes. I think maybe seven because I'm not free at eight. All right. So maybe I let the participant to start with seven and then see how many of you can, right? Because there will be more people. So the topic, the motion will be that the one of last week, okay? Yes. Yeah. So we use the one last yes. week. Should, should playing video games be considered a sport? The one last week, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So those and the moderator, um, you may also want to practice. Yeah, Mr. Michael. Yeah. So two of the bay from seven o'clock on Thursday and Friday. Yeah. All right. Okay. So they just show up and the churches will okay. randomly select who going to body bay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, but what do we do there? And the moderator. Um, All right, well, that that sums everything up, guys. Uh, we've been through everything we need to go through. Uh, so we'll show the judges how to, like, uh, at what standards to set things uh, tomorrow. And, yeah, we'll give you guys a chance to practice your judging, moderators a chance to moderate. And then, yeah. So I'll see you guys tomorrow night. Night, good night, everyone. Goodbye, Miss. Goodbye, Miss Darker. Goodbye. 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 Uh, also, Peach, I would Bye. like you uh, uh, if you're able to send over the PowerPoint we have for you today. Peach, Michael is very sweet. Yeah. I prefer.